welcome to Ultimate Survival Gear. Today, as you guys can see, I have yet again something from Solomon. Love this brand, let's open up the box and see what we got. And actually, I'm gonna give you a little bit of warning. Make sure to be careful because we're gonna see some bright colors on the screen. Look at that. <laughs> Check this, I mean, if you wanna be noticed, you're gonna be noticed in this, all right? <laughs> <laughs> this is Solomon Speedcross 5 yet again on this channel, but this time this is their non GTX version Which honestly I do like even more than the GTX version But we will talk about all of that later in this review currently $80 on Amazon the links are in the description below the link for Amazon and the link also for backcountry Sometimes backcountry has really really good deals. So I recommend checking out both of the links almost 10,000 reviews on Amazon. So people do like these shoes quite a lot. And uh, hopefully with this review today, you will be able to determine for yourself whether you like them or not. So let's start the review. As some of you know, this is not a regular review. No, this review is specifically for my ultimate survival shoes section. Basically, if this weren't just your trail running shoes, your hiking shoes, but something bad happened, and now you were surviving. You had to run for miles. You had to wear these shoes without taking them off for days. On the way you had to fight, climb, I don't know, do whatever that's necessary to survive. Would this be good for your survival? Not in this color probably, but uh, they do have some subtle colors. Check out the link in the description below. How do we make the judgment on this channel? We make the judgment based on eight different criteria. Let's begin with the criteria number one, comfort level. And in order to test the comfort level of all the boots and shoes that I review on this channel, I do a three mile run, non-stop, and then a five mile walk right after, non-stop, no pauses in between. And I continue wearing after I'm done with the run and the walk for the rest of the day, so that the total wear time is eight hours. Let's start with the first criteria here. Yes, the comfort level. Okay, so whenever it comes to the comfort level, I have to say, very, very impressive. There are a few factors that contribute to the comfort level. Let's start with the first one, the weight. All right, got my scale over here. This is size 10. And I am thinking this is, uh, this is really, really light. I would say should be probably around 13 ounce. Let's see if I'm anywhere close. Wow, 11.8, even better than I expected. This is very impressive, I gotta say. Now, if you're looking for really lightweight trail running shoes, uh, hiking shoes, you want to find something under 15 ounce. The more under 15 ounce, obviously the lighter is going to be. Now, over 15 ounce, really, it's not, it's not like it's going to be heavy at 16 or 17 ounce. It's still very lightweight. But the gold standard for the trail running shoes, for the hiking shoes, something under 15 ounce. As you can see here, it's well under 15 ounce. Now there's another thing that contributes to the comfort level, another factor, that's the flexibility of the outsole. And here, as you can see, it's not, it's not one of those cheap, flimsy outsoles at all. No, it definitely has some good stiffness to it, but at the same time, it has enough flexibility to give you comfort and to allow you to run properly in the shoes without putting any stress on your heels, on your ankles, on your knees. Let's move on to the inner sole, and I'm gonna take it out, and it is my favorite inner sole, I love it. It's the Ortholite, yes. Basically, Ortholite is a really, really cool technology, moisture wickering technology, especially important in something that you're gonna be putting in some, you know, some extra effort, running, right? Trail running shoes, after all. Basically, if your feet, you know, sweating, it's hot, this allows for the moisture to kind of soak through it and then dry up by itself without letting for the bacteria to spread, really good. Now you see here, there's a heel bed. It's a pretty soft heel bed, so don't expect too much from it, but it is here. There's also arch support and overall the cushioning is very nice. Once you remove the inner sole, you also have a very nice layer of jelly cushioning underneath that inner sole, which definitely, definitely adds very nice amount of impact protection. And you can really tell if you compare two pairs of different uh, Salomon weather boots or shoes and compare the ones that do have this blue jelly layer and some that don't, you will find the ones with the jelly layer 
way more comfortable than the ones that don't. So keep that in mind. Now you got the padding here in the tongue. You got the padding here in the shaft, in the heel. It's nicely padded. This right here definitely adds to the comfort. Throughout the whole shoe overall, it is very nicely padded. And here at the creasing spots, it's very, very soft. So overall, the comfort level of these shoes is Excellent. Salomon definitely did get these right. No wonder these are so popular. Let's move on to the criteria number two, proofing and protection. Now, in the beginning of this review, I said that, that I'm glad that these are not GTX. GTX is a fancy waterproofing technology. Don't get me wrong. If you are an outdoors, outdoors, sorry, immigrant here, enthusiast, right? If you need something waterproof, you go with GTX. You go with Gore-Tex because it's it's one of the best waterproofing technologies out there. It is lightweight, it is breathable. However, whenever it comes to the shoes, and this is really just a personal preference, but to me personally, I don't really see much point of having waterproof shoes. Why? Because you really don't have any clearance for the waterproofing. The water will get in regardless. You cross a small, tiny little creek, you step a little too hard in the puddle, splash, the water gets in, and now you're wet on the inside. And with a waterproof shoe, because there is less breathability than in non-waterproof shoe, they will take to dry up slower than the non-waterproof shoe. So I prefer just to get wet and then just to dry up by itself with the breathability that is available here in this shoe. Not only that, it is also much cheaper without the Gore-Tex waterproofing, but we will talk about the price point later. Let's talk about the protection now. Here you probably notice the very front toe cap, very nice if you're running on a rocky road excellent uh, just just perfect really all you need you do have a little bit of reinforcement at the very top of the toe box here i mean it's still very soft so don't drop anything heavy on your toe but for again for the rocky road you're running completely fine obviously your ankles are wide open but your heel is nicely reinforced and then you have plenty of the protection from the outsole because it's a very very high quality rubber but we will talk about that later let's move on to the criteria number three now quality and the design features now quality wise i mean salomon if you don't know salomon i highly recommend checking out salomon whatever it is hiking boots hiking shoes trail running shoes these guys they know exactly what they're doing i mean the comfort level of salomon boots shoes most of that stuff is just fantastic and judging by this one i mean it's, it's really just click on the link in the description below for amazon and you will find 9900 reviews probably already 10,000 if you're watching it you know a few months down the road that is very impressive almost five stars that is very very impressive rating for amazon i gotta say so people do like these quite a lot and i mean if you've been subscribed long, long enough to this channel you know that my favorite all-time boots hiking boots survival boots are Solomon yes from Solomon <laughs> so I absolutely love it and uh, people love it and uh, I well maybe maybe you will love it too so <laughs> let's talk about the design features here as you can see here we got our uh, quick lay system which is very nice gotta say not everybody likes it I personally do like it because it saves a lot of time you just put your foot on you slide this thing in and then you kind of roll this in and then there is a hidden pocket that took me years to discover but finally I did it was a revelation there you go right here there's a little pocket right here you stuff it all in there and here the pocket is actually located in very very convenient spot so once you're actually wearing the shoes it's much easier to do but you stuff it in and there you go no tripping hazard it looks very nice very slick and you just go for your trail run and you run for miles and miles and miles all right let's move on to the criteria number four now outsole tractional stability so when I, whenever I do my run and my walk I do it on a variety of different surfaces. I start with some pavement, some dry sand, wet sand, dry grass, wet grass, rocky road, uh, some flat shiny surfaces like marble, tile, uh, wet grass, dry grass, I'm not sure if I said it already, trail surface, just everything that I can find, including some rubber floors. Yes, because why not? I test it on pretty much everything that there is available. And I gotta say, this handles very well on pretty much everything keep in mind this is more on the aggressive side and you probably noticed how aggressive these grooves are excellent traction on st slippery stuff like wet grass i mean this just bites into that wet grass and holds like just fantastic 
You know, if you're running, I mean, this was designed for cross-country running. That's really what it was designed for. And you can tell by the outsole. It's not super comfortable or convenient to wear it on a daily basis uh, if you are just, you know, using these as a sneakers because there is a little bit, you know, quite a lot of aggression on the outsole. But if you are using it for trail running purposes specifically, you will be very, very impressed with this outsole. Let's move on to the criteria number five really quickly, temperature. Now, obviously this is not designed for cold or winter or anything like that. Um, if you do plan to, to run, you know, some colder temperatures, I would recommend probably going with the GTX version just so that you have a, at least a little bit of the waterproofing. But this particular one for three season, fantastic. Very nice, very breathable. Again, without the Gore-Tex, you have even more breathability. So very nice and breathable in the hot temperatures. Let's move on to the criteria number six, sizing. These are true to the size. No problems with the sizing at all. You can get these in the same shoe size that you normally wear. Usually I recommend getting half size bigger just to have a little bit of extra space. But because this is more like a running sneaker, you should be just fine going with the size that is a normal uh, size that you wear on a daily basis. Let's move on to the criteria number seven, our balance of application. So if this really was your shoe and you were surviving, in the, if this really was your survival shoe and you were surviving in it, would this be good? Obviously not in this color because everybody's gonna be looking at you. You will never be able to hide from anybody. Everybody will be able to see you from 10 miles away. But they do have some very, very subtle colors, really nice colors. Again, the links are in the description below. Um, and it might actually be a pretty good option for survival. And the reason for that is because you do have overall, obviously not in this color, but even in this color, something that looks like a, for the most part, an everyday sneaker that you could wear on a daily basis and not look weird, unless you're wearing something like this. Well, you still don't look weird. You just attract attention, right? And that's not, ideally, that's not what we want to do in survival situations. But a subtle color, wearing on a daily basis, looking like it's a regular, you know, running sneaker or whatever workout shoe, if there is a survival situation that is involved, well, right there on your feet, you already have something that you can be as fast, as nimble as you need to be with the outsole that can take you cross country because that's what it is designed for. Super aggressive from, you mean, I mean, very, very slippery terrains, no problems at all. And you have at the same time, fantastic, fantastic comfort level and that brings me to the very very last criterion here is criteria number eight price currently eighty dollars 79 something something on amazon check out the back country like i said sometimes they do have better deals i think it's a fantastic price for this shoe right now i mean it's just really really good i'm thinking that salomon might be coming up with the speed cross six um, anytime now pretty soon um, so we will see we will see the price might drop even more when the new model comes out but we'll see as of right now though the price is really really good i mean you know if you're looking at other brands like for example adidas terex uh, la sportiva in that price range Mm, you might not, I mean, this might be the best option that there is uh, whenever it comes to something that you can, you know, trail run for, for miles and miles and, and still feel comfortable and have an excellent outsole like this. Now, when we're talking about the GTX, obviously it gets a little bit more expensive because GTX on its own is expensive waterproofing technology. But again, keep in mind, if you don't need it, well, you can save and get yourself an excellent, excellent, I mean, really, really good shoe. So let me know in the comments below, guys. What do you think about these uh, Salomon trail running shoes? What do you think about this review? If you have any requests for reviews, drop them in the comments below and I will be happy to address them. As always, thank you very much for watching. Always appreciate your time. God bless and I will see you in the next video.